Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about creating a better calculator in Ruby. If you've been following along with this course, then you'll know that in the beginning of the course, we created a very simple calculator. Basically, we allowed the user to input in two numbers. We took those numbers, added them together, and then printed out the answer onto the screen. So it was a really simple calculator, but in this tutorial, we're gonna be building an even better calculator. This calculator is not only gonna be able to add two numbers, but it'll be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers, and will allow the user to choose which one they're gonna do. So this is gonna be pretty cool, and we're gonna use a lot of the stuff that we've learned up to this point in this course in order to do it. So the first order of business when we're creating our calculator is we need to get some input from the user. I need to get certain information, right? We need to get the first number, we need to get the second number, and then we need to get the operation that they wanna perform. So they would need to type in like two, and then a plus sign, and then a five, you know, something like that, basically. So let's go ahead and do that. Down here in my program, the first thing I wanna do is just print out a prompt. So I'm gonna say puts, and we're gonna print out enter first number. Basically, we're prompting them to enter in the first number. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take whatever number they enter and I wanna store it inside of a variable. So I'm gonna create a variable called num1 and I'm just gonna set it equal to gets dot chomp. And this will basically just get the number that they enter in and remove the new line that gets entered when we click the enter key. So now that we've done this, we can do something similar for the other two pieces of information we need. The next, the next thing I wanna get is the operator. So I'm just gonna say enter operator and basically this is going to be like plus minus uh, division or multiplication they're going to enter in whatever they want to do so over here instead of saying num1 we can just say op and this is going to stand for operator and we're just going to get whatever they input finally i'm going to ask them to enter the second number so i'll say enter second number and we're just going to store this as num2 so essentially what we're doing is we're asking them to enter in the first number once they do that, we're asking them to enter in the operator, plus, minus, division, multiplication, subtraction, whatever. Then we're asking them to enter in the second number and we're storing all of that information inside of variables. Now, there's one more thing we have to do. Remember, when the user enters in a number, in, when we ask them for input, it automatically gets converted into a string. So what we wanna do is we wanna convert the number that they enter from a string into a floating point number. So I'm just gonna say gets.chomp.2 underscore f, and this is gonna convert it into a floating point number. I'm gonna do the same thing down here, dot two underscore f. So now num1 and num2 are gonna be floating point numbers, assuming the user entered the number in correctly. All right, so once we do that, we actually need to do a couple other things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out if they want us to add the numbers, subtract the numbers, multiply the numbers, or divide the numbers, right? We have no way of doing that right now. So we need to figure out, how can we figure out if they entered in a plus sign? How can we figure out if they entered in a minus sign? We need some way of figuring out what they entered. And this is a perfect scenario where we can use an if statement. Remember, an if statement allows us to respond to the different values in our programs. So if something has a certain value, we can do something. If it has another value, we can do something else. Perfect situation right here for an if statement. We can check to see if it's a plus sign, if it's a minus sign, if it's a division sign. And depending on the one it is, we can do something. Down here, I'm gonna create an if statement. I'm just gonna say if, and then we always wanna make sure that we end off the if statement down here. And up here, we're gonna put a condition. I'm gonna be checking a couple different conditions in this if block. The first thing I'm gonna do is check to see if it's equal to a plus sign. So I can check to see if OP, and remember, OP was the operator that got entered, is equal to, I'm gonna make those double equals, and over here we'll just make a plus sign. So this is gonna be true if the operator they entered was a plus sign. So down here, what we can do is we can just say puts, and we'll just print out the answer. So I'm just gonna put, num1 plus num2, awesome. But there's also some other scenarios, right? The scenario where they enter a minus sign. So I can say else if, E-L-S-I-F, and I'm gonna say OP is equal to minus sign. If that's true, we're just gonna put num1 minus num2. We can do the same thing for multiplication and division. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. This will just make it go by a little quicker. And now instead of checking for subtraction, we'll check for division, which is just gonna be a forward slash. Finally, we can check for multiplication. So I'm gonna come down here and we'll just check for an asterisk and then down here we'll multiply them. So we're able to basically capture the four types of arithmetic, right? And respond to them appropriately. There's gonna be one more situation though that we wanna cover, which is if they enter in an operator that's not valid. So I'm just gonna say else. And remember the code inside of this else is only gonna get executed when none of the stuff up here is true. So when none of this stuff is true, in other words, if it's not plus sign, minus division or multiplication, we can just print out an error. We can say puts invalid operator. And that's basically gonna give them a little error message like, hey, you messed up, you didn't put in the right operator. So we've essentially written out our program. We get the three pieces of information. We check to see what operator they put in and we respond to it. So let's run our program and see how it works. Now remember, whenever we're running a program where we need to get input from the user inside of Ruby, we're gonna have to use the command line. So normally in this course, we've been using this little Atom plugin over here called Atom Runner but now we're gonna to have to use the command line. So I'm gonna come down here and I just have one inside of my Atom text editor. And I'm just gonna type Ruby draft.rb. That's the name of my file. And I'm just gonna click enter. And let's go ahead and use this little calculator. So it says enter the first number, we'll enter in a five. And it says enter the operator. So why don't we enter in a plus sign and it says enter the second number. So let's enter in a six. And when I click enter, we should hopefully get the correct answer. So you can see down here, five plus six is 11. So our program actually worked, that's awesome. All right, let's do it again. Let's try another one. Why don't we try to do some multiplication? So enter the first number, we'll enter in a five, and then we'll multiply it by 8.65. And let's see, oh wait, sorry, this is the operator. So multiplication, we'll multiply it by 8.65, and let's see what we get, 42.25. So yeah, that seems about right. So our calculator is functioning correctly. And let's try one more case where we enter an invalid operator. So I'm gonna run the program one more time. We'll enter in a four and then we'll just enter in like a T as the operator and a five. And okay, so it tells us invalid operator. So we have a four function calculator. We've actually built an awesome four function calculator. What's cool about this calculator is it's able to respond to the operator that the user enters. And we can do that using if statements. So this is one of those situations where if statements are just gonna come in such handy because they're so useful, right? We can check all these different conditions. If one of them's true, we can do something. If another one's true, we can do something else. Um, so this is kind of bringing together, like getting user input and if statements into one single program, which ends up being a pretty awesome calculator. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.